The Yug Tiger, or Hunting Tiger, was at 72 tons the heaviest armoured vehicle of World War II. Armed with a 128mm Pac-44 main gun, it outranged and outshot all Allied tanks. But it was built in microscopically small numbers, with between 70 and 88 actually seeing service, and was plagued with mechanical problems due to its excessive weight. Schwerer Panzerjägerabteilung 512 was the second army unit to receive the 72-ton Jagdtiger in February 1945. The vehicles were slow to reach units because of time-consuming quality inspections and technical difficulties. The unit was supposed to be equipped with 33 Jagdtigers, but this was never achieved. Instead, the numbers were made up with Panzer IVs and Stug III assault guns. Many of the crews had previously crewed Tiger Ones, and they didn't think much of the Jagdtiger, which lacked a turret. During April 1945, the unit saw extensive combat, springing some nasty ambushes on the advancing Americans. Most of the time, the massive vehicle proved highly unreliable, frequently failing mechanically in combat situations, leading to crews abandoning and destroying them. On the 11th of April 1945, the first company, commanded by Knight's Cross holder Captain Albert Ernst, set up an ambush position along a ridgeline and waited for US forces to blunder into his trap. Three days earlier, the second company had been ordered to the town of Una, where they had sprung an ambush on an advancing US unit, knocked out 20 Sherman tanks and armored cars before retreating. One Jagdtiger was knocked out by US tanks. Battle Group Ernst now spread out on the 11th of April, covering the road to the town of Langscheder, waited for the forward elements of the US 8th Armored Division, which was aiming for the Harz Mountains. Ernst had four Jagdtigers, reinforced by a platoon of Panzer IVs, four Stug IVs, and a platoon of 37mm mobile flak guns. The US forces walked right into Ernst's killing field, Opening fire, the Jagdtiger's massive 128mm gun easily picked off the advancing Shermans, knocking out 11, the other German armour also accounting for some of them. Around 40 other US vehicles were hit and destroyed, and the US column fell back and called for air support. Three waves of P-47 Thunderbolts bombed and strafed the ridgeline, knocking out a single Jagdtiger and a flak half-track, but the German flak guns managed to shoot down two Thunderbolts in return. Kampfgruppe Ernst withdrew, and over the next few days his remaining three Jagdtigers took out four more Shermans, two at ranges exceeding four kilometers, record shots for the period, demonstrating again the lethality of the Jagdtiger's potent main gun. But realizing the futility of further resistance against overwhelming Allied power and to spare the local civilian population, Captain Ernst surrendered his remaining Jagdtigers at the town of Iserlohn on the 16th of April 1945. The three remaining Jagdtigers, along with their support vehicles, surrendered to a unit of the US 99th Infantry Division, who were very interested to see the massive Jagdtiger up close and personal. The American unit, the 2nd Battalion 394th Infantry Regiment, discovered that the Jagdtiger unit still had plenty of ammunition left, Captain Ernst having decided to spare the town of Iserlohn and its inhabitants from destruction if he had presented battle to the Americans. In the final analysis, the Jagdtiger concept was a failure for the Germans, though when used effectively by experienced crews and when not plagued by mechanical issues, the Jagdtiger was unbeatable, its gun able to pick off Allied tanks at enormous ranges, while its own massive frontal armour made it impervious to all Allied tank and anti-tank guns. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel via PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.